Hello beautiful souls and welcome back to another video. Today's video is inspired by one of your comments and there was a comment left on one of my videos asking for book recommendations on a particular subject and I thought it would be good to go through and just share a whole list of book books and ideas that have really helped me heal and transform its personal development, its spirituality, its clinical psychology, it's all these different things that have helped me become who I am and have a deeper understanding of how things work and what I apply to really move myself forward and how I have not only gotten to this point, but also these belief systems, these structures and tools that I gained to help me move forward. So without further ado, let's jump right in. And I made a list and I separated it into two, two sections here. The first thing we'll go through are books that I've actually read and applied in my life. The second list is a lot of resources in books that I have not read that are on my list. So I say that because I don't, just like when I was a trainer, I would never recommend something to you that I haven't done myself and experienced. So it's the same thing with the books. I'm not gonna recommend books that I have not read unless I'm giving you that information ahead of time. So the first book, all of Neville Goddard's books. The first one is Feeling is the Secret. That one really helped me understand how to embody the energy and the vision of what it's like when my manifestation is realized and given me tools and a process to get in alignment with what it is that I'm here to create for my own life. So all of Never, Neville Goddard's books, you can literally just type in Neville Goddard PDF and uh, or Neville Goddard books and PDF. Don't tell YouTube or publishing companies, I told you that. And you can probably get a lot on uh, line for free. Just saying, you might, I don't know. So check that out, all of Neville Goddard's books. Dr. Joe Dispenza, you are the placebo, breaking the habit of being yourself, becoming supernatural. Joe Dispenza's books are incredible. And he talks about basically more an advanced scientific analytical version of what Neville Goddard was talking about, about we create from the quantum field that your mind is the most powerful tool and we can tap into these altered states of consciousness through meditation and put ourselves in that energetic state of what it's going to feel like, the sensations, when we have what we want, when we're living the life that we want, when we're in shape and have the lover that we want and we're wealthy and all these things. So creating from the quantum, it's about belief systems, it's about future pacing, it's about understanding energetics and epigenetics and how your thoughts influence your genes and your genes uh, are proteins and your proteins basically put out what you are in the world and it all comes from your thoughts. So Dr. Joe Dispenza's books. A spiritual, spiritual books, Wayne Dyer, the late great Dr. Wayne Dyer has been a great spiritual teacher and I love him because he has wonderful sense of humor and also he does a great job of applying spirituality into practical everyday knowledge and help me really understand a lot of these different principles. So all of Dr. Wayne Dyer's books, I really like, there's a spiritual solution to every problem. He's got so many. So Dr. Wayne Dyer, I'm currently reading, before I gloss over it, a book by Florence Scovel Shin, very old school book, also on the lines of what Neville Goddard and Dr. Joe Dispenza are talk, er, in talk, they're talking about. Her, the book I'm reading from her is The Game of Life and How to Play It. It's basically the same thing. Everything starts with the mind into the material, what you think is what you get, and how there's a correlation between the immaterial and the material, but it starts with your mind, with your energy. So they're kind of saying the same things, and you'll see a lot of the similarities from these authors from different time periods. So, huh, I wonder if they could be onto something. All these different authors talking about the same thing in a different way, which is also what I talk about a lot here. I'm just distilling it through my own lens and experiences, my own personal life experiences. If you are watching this, you probably are a starseed, a light worker. Maybe you had a tough, tough childhood. Maybe you were mentally, physically, emotionally, sexually abused when you were young. Maybe you were neglected consistently over a long period of time when you were young. I was, I, I had a big problems with abandonment and emotional neglect. I learned that I had developed something called CPTSD, which is complex PTSD. 
unlike PTSD, where you think of like a war veteran who saw his friend get shot or something and they have acute flashbacks when they hear a car backfire or something like that. CPTSD is more subtle and insidious in my ways, in my opinion. And it's basically when you've experienced trauma for such a long period of time where it was so consistent, you developed what's called complex PTSD to where it undermined your sense of being, your sense of identity in a lot of different ways. So there are some books that I recommend that you read on CPTSD and I'll also give you a YouTube channel that's fantastic. So the YouTube channel is this woman, her channel is called The Crappy Childhood Fairy. And if you feel that you have CPTSD or a lot of unresolved childhood issues, hence we all do, give her channel a watch and she talks all about CPTSD. What is complex PTSD? How does it manifest itself in our lives? How do we work to heal these things? A couple of books that I read that were incredible, CPTSD, uh, there was a book called The Boy Who Was Raised as a Dog. So if you feel you have PTSD, CPTSD, I recommend you read that book. Another one that really opened my eyes and gave me kind of a practical guidebook to start healing and working through my own complex post-traumatic stress disorder is CPTSD from thriving or from surviving to thriving. And obviously you can just Google this stuff and it'll just pop right in. A book about relationships, masculinity, understanding romance and sexuality as a heterosexual man, but also I'll caveat that with saying, I feel like if every man and woman read this book, the divorce rate would drastically reduce because it gives you an understanding of how ma masculine and feminine energies work together in a romantic setting so it doesn't matter if you're gay, if you're a lesbian, or you're two gay men, there's a masculine and a feminine energy within every relationship. And by understanding the play between the two energies, you can understand which you are, what your dominant energy is, what you need in a partner, how it manifests itself when you're with somebody, et cetera. So this book is by David Data, and the book is called The Way of the Superior Man. Absolutely groundbreaking for me, changed my freaking life. Along with that, I'll recommend another book if you're a man who's always struggled with masculinity or like understanding women or felt like you had gotten walked all over, you were always labeled the nice guy, never got what you want. There's a book called No More Mr. Nice Guy. I recommend you read that. I can't remember the author right now. It means I'm probably supposed to read it again. Books on manifestation and energy. There's a book, uh, Abraham Hicks, you can just Google her. And there's tons of stuff on YouTube. You can just start watching her. This is all about getting in alignment. She talks about the same thing about manifestation, getting in the feeling state, getting in a good vibration, understanding that everything is vibration and frequency and you're attracting what your vibration is. Your vibration is what you're putting out. Abraham Hicks, her book is Ask and It Is Given, but really you can watch a ton of her stuff on YouTube. It's awesome. Dolores Cannon, Dolores Cannon's books. She was a hypnotherapist that this is a more esoteric, spiritual, kind of higher level understanding, like once your third eye is like really open. Dolores Cannon talks about how basically, she, she was a hypnotherapist, she since passed on to the next, the, the, the next realm, the next life, and she basically found a way to channel people's past lives through hypnotherapy. So she would hypnotize people with her husband before hypnotherapy was a thing like way back in the 60s or the 50s or something. And all of a sudden these extraterrestrials would come through through her patients and give her all this esoteric knowledge of the universe. And so if you're into more of esoteric books like that, you wanna know more about spiritual knowledge and you're taking a very high perspective, like seventh, eighth dimensional perspectives and knowledge. Dolores Cannon has books, Conversations with Nostradamus where she channeled Nostradamus through her patience and the convoluted universe convoluted universe series uh, i haven't read a lot of them uh, but anyways dolores cannon's amazing one of the things she always talks about is how we're not meant to be sick earth is a school if you're sick physically it's because you're making yourself sick but the good news is you can make yourself unsick and there's all i won't get into my own side talks about shadow governments and all that crap but anyways so dolores cannon books amazing David R. Hawkins, and this is, he has two books that I've read or I'm reading through one still. First one is Power Versus Force, about how, again, everything is energy, and he mapped out analytically a map of human consciousness and energies from zero to a thousand. So zero, the lowest human emotion that's barely human at all. It's almost like you're just like an animal is when we feel guilt and shame. It goes up through like anger, pride, neutrality, acceptance, love, 
generosity, all these things, all the way to enlightenment, that level of a thousand, which is Jesus and Buddha, Christ consciousness, Lord Shiva, right? That's all these ascended masters. So power versus force will give you a great understanding of energetics and where you're at in your energetic scale and level of actual spiritual consciousness and awareness. David R. Hawkins, Power Versus Force. I'm also reading Letting Go by him, which is fantastic. The next book I'll say, this is a psychological book about shifting realities and it's more practical. It's called Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. This is about shifting your identity or, or shifting into a parallel reality, but it's more practical. He was a plastic surgeon that would have two people he gives this example in his book about giving two same exact surgeries for a man that had a scar on his face that was very similar and they felt like crap, they had no self-esteem. He would do two almost identical surgeries and have amazing results with both of them. And one guy literally the next day would wake up and live the life of his dreams because his whole identity changed because he thought that this scar was the reason that women didn't like him and he was poor and wasn't successful went on, became a millionaire, et cetera. And then the other guy, exact same surgery, stayed the exact same, even though the surgery repaired his scar. And so what he talks about is how it's how we view ourselves, how we have to shift our identity and our self-concept and learn how to embody a better version of ourselves by what we believe about ourselves to be true. So it's about identity shifting, very powerful, psycho-cybernetics. My old mentor recommended that to me. Before we continue, I wrote down, trust your intro intuition. What you will realize is you're on the journey to becoming a better person. You're on the journey to improve yourself in different ways. Trust your intuition and listen to the synchronicities. Because if you're watching this video, you're on the journey of personal development, of spiritual development, of healing your past traumas, healing karmic cycles, all these things, your soul knows what's best for you. So listen and watch for the synchronicities. If you're in a coffee shop and you overhear someone hear this book and it's recommended to you, and then all of a sudden, three days later, someone at work says, oh, I just picked up this book. And then you happen to be on YouTube or something and you get an ad for this book or like a video pops up for this book. That's the book you're supposed to read. So your soul is trying to speak to you always through synchronicities Pay attention to your own intuition, what the signs, and listen to those books because I guarantee now that you're watching this video, you're gonna have a lot of other material and books pop up. Now, with that, for instance, I'll give you an example. For me, for whatever reason, this book, The Celestine Prophecy, um, and I didn't even really read through it and I didn't know there's a ton of books to it. And I guess I'm supposed to go back and read it again. My heart tells me I'm not supposed to though. I understand the gist of it. I read and audio booked enough of it to get it. Like I'm already in the flow. But the Celestine Prophecy, when it was first introduced to me, somebody at work had mentioned it. It came up again in another random conversation with someone who's completely unrelated. Then it popped up like, I can't remember something. It came into my world like five different ways in the course of a week from five different sources. So that was like in a personal example. And that is to share with you, listen to your intuition, watch for these signs for what pops up because this is what your soul's trying to guide you to. I heard of this book a long time ago and then it was brought to my attention yesterday. I was at the dog park around the corner and I met this wonderful little group of people and dogs, my, we, get, we play every morning and stuff. And the one woman is fantastic and I knew she was a light worker when we started talking about stuff when everyone else left, it was just her and I. And she goes, have you ever heard of the book Bringers of the Dawn? And I was like, actually, I have. I was like, is that a book from the Pleiadians? And she's like, yeah. She's like, oh, most people don't know that. Or, or she was kind of surprised and kind of not. But I was like, okay. So I had heard of that book a long time ago. Bringers of the Dawn came in and now I'm sharing it with you. So that's another example of a synchronicity that I'm like, okay, clearly I'm supposed to read this book. So listen to your intuition. Bringers of the Dawn, read that too. I have not read that. That's the caveat. Uh, I, before I move on to the books, I have not read and it kept going, guys. So I'm, I'm, like when I started to go, I just started getting all these books. I was like, so I'll say these names, but I haven't read a lot of these books. The one I have read that I will recommend, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra. It's a very small book. This gives you, these are the seven spiritual laws of success. You, these are also called the natural laws. And so when you read this book, it'll give you an understanding of, again, energetics, how the universe works. There's a game plan, a roadmap. As the, as the saying goes, success leaves clues, right? So 
if all these books are different from different time periods and different people, but they're pretty much saying very similar to the same things, there's a roadmap to success, guys. You can create this stuff. You just kind of arm yourself with the knowledge. So these are, I'm getting so many downloads now. Okay, so that's the last one, Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. I will recommend Deepak Chopra. These are now books that I have not read that I plan to. There's an author that Dr. Wayne Dyer talked about that I have not read, but I'm supposed to, and I feel like it's gonna be when I'm a full-time YouTuber and I'm traveling and I'll just be doing a bunch of reading and my knowledge and all this stuff's gonna take another lot. Anyways, uh, Carlos Castaneda. Carlos Castaneda, it's ancient, I think like Native American or like Mesoamerican wisdom, like it's either like Aztec, I don't think he's Aztec or something like that, I, but something along those lines, but Carlos Castaneda is an author you should look up. It's more, again, more esoteric spiritual concepts, more of like Dolores Cannon's type stuff. The other book that I came into my world that I'm supposed to read, King, Warrior, Magician, Lover. This is about the male archetypes and the stages that we go through of evolution, I think as men, but I'm sure it's just our souls and people. There's another book called The 12 Laws of the Universe that I haven't read and I can't remember the author of that. But like I said, at this point, I'm just gonna kind of go and talk about a lot of these things that keep popping in my, my head. I Am That by Nizar Gardarta Maharaj. This was a, this is a, an Indian sage uh, that Dr. Wayne Dyer recommended. Also, I remember buying the book, but I didn't read it. I wasn't ready for it at the time either spiritually because it's, it is like a whole nother level of consciousness. I'm approaching that level now. But anyways, I am that Nizar Gardata Maharaj. This is about, this next one is about shifting realities and quantum jumping. It's called Reality Transurfing. I have not read it. It's, I think the last name of the author is Vadim, or if you just type in reality transurfing, Vadim, it's about quantum shifting, parallel reality, shifting into a different reality. Uh, there are, there is the Kabbalah, um, which is the seven hermetic principles. This is more of an esoteric ancient knowledge. It's more commonplace now about mentalism. So the Kabbalah hermetic principles, I have a ton of books that I'm, I'm supposed to read at some point on the lost city of Atlantis, on Lemuria, the Lemurian scrolls, uh, the immortality of the Lemurians or something like that. So books on Lemuria, books on Atlantis. Now I'm getting into more esoteric concepts. So these are more higher spiritual concepts, but I do want to share them. And that's what I wrote down and all that's coming to me at the moment. That's a lot of information as it is. Like this is like over a decade of stuff that I've read and studied over and over. What else am I missing? There's a book back here I have called The Miracle Power of Your Mind, Dr. Joseph Murphy. So Joseph Murphy. And I've read some books on like developing my psychic abilities. I've thrown out so many books through the years, guys. I, I regret it now, but I didn't have like a, I, I've been on the move for so much. I didn't want to lug these books around, but I'll start building a library eventually. I mean, I still have one, but anyways. I digress. So the most important thing I want to say, guys, is that, great, reading is good. Knowledge is, is crucial to your success. Do not fall in the trap of not applying and getting into mental masturbating. Mental masturbation is when you watch all the videos and you read all the books, but you do zero application. So the saying is, learning is in the application. Take one idea stop reading the book and go apply it. I remember watching this podcast of this guy on The Real Bradley, and he's like, I'm the type of guy that spent 5,000 bucks to go to the conference. I got one idea from the conference, and I was like, this is what I'm gonna do. I left on the first day of a five-day conference, but I applied that one idea and made $5 million off it. So none of this stuff matters if you don't apply it. Take one idea and apply it to your life and get comfortable with the change it creates. Your intuition and soul is what's guiding you. The quotes I'll leave you with today. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I may remember. Involve me and I'll learn. Ben Franklin. So apply what you're learning here, guys, or else it's all useless. And then the second quote is from me. Learning is in the application. That's it. Real learning is in the application. So have you learned? You will only know if you're actually applying it. You took Spanish in high school, great. You never learned it because you didn't apply it. You didn't take any courses about Spanish, but you lived in Mexico for six months. You learned it and became fluent. Learning is in the application. So hopefully that was helpful, guys. I love you so much, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.